So good afternoon, everybody. My name's Chris Duffin, and uh, I'm the current president of the British Society for the History of Pharmacy. And we're a group of people from a wide range of backgrounds who share an interest in the history of pharmacy. Further details about our group and the activities that we run can be found on our website. And our open access publication, The Pharmaceutical Historian, is available online. And we're very pleased to consider papers from international authors. And uh, just while I've got you with me, any um, members, please, can I just remind you to sign up for the attendance of the AGM next week. Uh, details for joining are uh, in the latest edition of the Gazette. Well, I'd like to welcome you all, Zoom participants and YouTube viewers alike, to this evening's lecture. Could I ask you, though, please, to uh, ensure that video and microphone are both switched off? For the duration of the talk. That's uh, partly to make sure that uh, you get the best reception uh, that you can, uh, but also it avoids uh, distraction uh, uh, to others. You're welcome to use the chat function uh, on Zoom, and I'll try and present any questions arising from the talk at the end of the lecture. And if you're watching the live stream on YouTube, there's also a chat function available there, which we'll try to keep an eye on um, and please note also that closed captioning is available should you require it. That's just a little bar at the bottom of the screen that comes up with a, an interpretation of what's actually being said. This evening's talk is being recorded and will be available on YouTube uh, as soon as we're able to share it, um, usually within a day or two. And now it's my very great pleasure to introduce Zhao Nato. Uh, Zhao is a researcher and museologist and is director of the Pharmacy Museum in Lisbon. And uh, if you've never had the opportunity to visit the museum, I encourage you to do so. Some of the exhibits are absolutely fabulous. And Jao has also been president of the Portuguese Association of Museology, uh, I think for over 10 years, if I'm correct. I'm sure we're all looking forward immensely to his talk on Agatha Christie and Hercule, Hercule Poirot in the Pharmacy Museum. So I hand over to you, Jao, and uh, and start sharing the screen. Thank you very much, Chris. And it's a pleasure to be with all of you. Thank you very much for this invitation. Uh, I suppose I must tell you all that you are most welcome in Lisbon, but also in Oporto, because the museum now has two branches in Lisbon and Oporto. And uh, let's go further to the presentations. I'm so sorry that I'm not in Lisbon now, to now and I ask Brian and Chris to help me with this presentation. So why Agatha Christie in my uh, presentation? I could choose Monty Python <laughs> or even, or even Conan Doyle, because we do have items from Conan Doyle and Monty Python. But I choose Agatha Christie for one reason. Last year, after the lockdowns, I need to bring the visitors live to the museum. So I choose Agatha Christie and Eric Poirot because, you know, it was the 100th year of anniversary of Hercule Poirot. And that's the reason why I choose Agatha Christie at the Pharmacy Museum. All right, Chris. So you're going to see most of the, the books are Hercule Poirot. You know why now? but also during the visit to our museum and the theme of the, this special visit was really Agatha Christie and Kilparo at the Pharmacy Museum. We also link to other books like The Passage to Frankfurt or Destiny and No, or even the, uh, the Man with the Brown Suit because we also have items that we could relate it with those books. And we ask the, our visitors also to bring the books with them. Not only 
to make the link to find the try to find any page any item could related with the visit but also to make this connection television books and museums let's go chris i must tell one thing all the items that you're going to see are originals and they belong to the pharmacy museum. One of the aspects that we intend to, to make a focus in this visit and special it is presentation, not for the British community that is normal, but in Portugal, many people didn't know about the link with Agatha Christie and pharmacy or even archaeology. So using our items, like, like you are now seeing, well, we could speak many things about these relations, special this one, as you see, Agatha Christie in the First World War, and make the link with Captain Hastings and Hercule Poirot. And with this, ideas and with these bonds which we could speak about the wounded in the first world war but also the theme of the refugees so explain and connect our links our items with special with this book we could understand a little bit more about the first world war even also some medicines in use in the First World War, but also the, like I told you, the theme of refugees and bring the idea of Equipe as a war refugee. And it was interesting that we could speak also during the visit about the refugees today. Here in, the muse in this uh, slide, you can see our war area, the uh, First War and uh, the wars in uh, use, uh, sorry, the, also the first world war items, but also the ones that we use in the 60s and 70s in Africa. Also in here, you can see a lady in a laboratory. And by this way, also in our museum, we link the pharmacy in the beginning of the 20th century and Agatha Christie. Let's go. Crazy. All right. So, what do we have here? So, in here, and um, with these two pharmacies, and you can see the top one, it's a pharmacy, a Portuguese pharmacy from Lisbon from the beginning of the 20th century. The, the other one, it's a pharmacy, not from Lisbon, but a port from the 20s. So by this way, we could link the Agatha Christie and all the knowledge that she acquired as in the dispensary and how she used those substances when she was using the skills at the First World War to saving people and how she used that knowledge in the books to kill other ones. So it was interesting, this expert, because my friends from the police, they didn't allow for me to tell any substance that could kill uh, anyone. So I wasn't allowed to tell just I was allowed to speak a little bit about the substance, but every, every what I asked everyone was try and find these items special in some books like black coffee. But I, I must tell you the truth. The police, my friends from police didn't allow because they said I could give some ideas and that wasn't so great for the next weeks that's in the front page, they could use my image on the museum about that persons. But it was quite interesting because it was a permanent for, for us to tell how a pharmacy 
was organized in a hospital or even a pharmacy and how we could arrange our knowledge to save people and also to make the, the more folks about the, the, the new medicines, the new breakdowns in the beginning of the 20th century, but also during the 20s after the, the First World War. All right, Chris. I think you remember that in the wasp nest, there is a reference with apothecary and, uh, and in the pharmacy. Because we have a Chinese pharmacy uh, that I brought from Macau uh, before, uh, uh, before the, when, we, the, uh, when we give back the Macau to the Chinese authorities who I brought this Chinese pharmacy. And by this way, we could link to the, this book, The Big Four. And also it was interesting by this way to speak about the Chinese pharmacy. The China, and also to link about the moments that we were living, special when we think about the, they still use live stocks and live animals in the markets, but also in the pharmacy, the traditional Chinese pharmacy. So, but also it was interesting because we could link that, especially with this one, with Big Four, that's how England and especially London was a top of the world, that you in London, you could reunite so many uh, cultures. And by this way, you could, travel in London and, and we, you could travel around the world in the same place. But by this, by this uh, theme, we could speak a little bit about the Chinese pharmacy and how they still use the live animals and good things or bad things and using that. Let's go, uh, Chris. Also, one of aspects we we done was put some focus in some items that was used in some books for killing. So, using the and also to make a reference of some health professionals in the, in the Agatha Christie uh, book, special with the Kilparo. If we think about these doctors are the main reference, but also the nurses. Apothecaries, not so many times, but the knowledge of the apothecaries was used to make all these drugs and use these two uh, samples, a bottle or syringe, in this, especially in these two books, especially in the yellow areas. And, and with the yellow areas, we also use this book to speak a little bit about the relationship between Captain Hastings and South America and also show all the items we have from South America from the 19th century, from the pharmacies of South America of the 19th century. Uh, it was interesting because many people didn't relate it also the Agatha Christie books and, Cap and the Captain Racing's It's South America. Many of the visitors always think about Agatha Christie and England. And not many uh, of them know or notice that the relations with South America and special Captain Hastings. And as you know, with these yellow areas, we can think and we can remember Captain Hastings as 
also the person's special uh, link with Argentina and his uh, business in South America, but also the, when he brought South America, Argentina to London with the restaurant. Let's go, Chris. One of the uh, items is always linked uh, in, uh, in our Dame Agatha Christie's is bottles, bottles and pharmacy bottles. So in this visit, uh, we, show, we show how beautiful are the pharmacy bottles in the end of the 19th century and during the, most of the part of the 20th century. The, not just the color of the bottles, but how pretty are the labels and how important is the label in the Portuguese pharmacy. And uh, because we have so different kind of bottles like the English, uh, the English pharmacy in those days, we have these kind of samples, brown, black or blue, and blue is quite beautiful, but all this knowledge and special the scientific knowledge and the artistic knowledge is together in these samples with the label. Label is not just an indicator, but also a gesture of art. Thank you, Chris. Let's go. Don't worry, I, I can speak, uh, I, I can still speaking about these bottles. We, we have more or less 7,000 bottles in our collection. And uh, most of them are from the 19th century and 20th century. Also, we have items from glass <laughs> items from the... 18th century until until the even until the Greek ancient Greece and uh, it's uh, special with the ancient Greece items and the Roman items glass uh, we have a good relationship with hearts uh, universities special with technology but also drawing and arts uh, subjects. But, all right. Also, it's, uh, it was also interesting because most of the, our visitors didn't, didn't have the, the idea how, how many bottles we use in, in pharmacy. It's very important that uh, by this way, Special seeing the pharmacies in because the, even the pharmacies in our museum are original. They could see how we arrange the the space, the pharmacy space, and how important is all the the distribution of the all these vessels, and special one way why we use in our public area all these vessels, special uh, using the, the idea of marketing. People need to go to the pharmacy and see all the different weapons we can use. It's like uh, if uh, uh, the going, if, if you, uh, anyone goes to a supermarket and doesn't see any food, probably that, that supermarket is not so good. It's the same thing going to a pharmacy. If the people couldn't see all the weapons we could use to fight against the disease, could be a problem to the pharmacies, to the apothecary. So showing all these shelves with all these different kind of bottles, it was a way, it is a way to, to show that that pharmacy 
has all the weapons you need to fight back any disease. That uh, was uh, something that uh, our visitors didn't uh, know a little bit. Uh, most of them thought it was a uh, lack of space, but mm, they didn't relate it, this idea with the, the marketing, but also marketing, professional marketing, but also uh, to show that pharmacy is probably the most scientific point next to the to the population. No, never uh, people should think that the, uh, the pharmacies are an open space, a public area where science is near them, with a open door for everyone and that is something that is so important when we study pharmacy in our history that has been has been for long long time a, 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 a space of for all of for all of people and special we try to solve all the problems, special when we starting to use the strategy for deploying pharmacies, not in the same street, not in the same area of the city, but follow the expansion of the cities or even the village. And that became a very important rule when we study uh, when we study farm, uh, when we study public uh, strategy, health strategies, and we started to see that that became something that will co was concerned to everyone, special to the politicians and the mayor. They need to avoid the lack of pharmacies, the, the lack of the uh, medicines to help that population in a special city or village. Uh, and they started to look to more and more uh, these situations to bring pharmacies near and near, near and near to bring those pharmacies to near to the population. Can, can you hear me properly? Yep. Yes. All right. All right. Good. Good. Can I still going? Yes. All right. I, I cannot see the slides moving. Can Oh. I'm still in the slides with the Portuguese bottles. Uh, on my on my machine, I'm looking at murder in Mesopotamia. I think um, Bryony will probably okay. need to take over. All right. Let me share. Sorry for the um, interruption, everybody. How's that? Uh, can uh, Brian? Can you go to the 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 bottles? Yeah, of course. Because I was, I couldn't see the moving. And all right, all right, go go forward. Next one, please. All right. So, returning to Agatha Christie, and special to like I told you, many of our visitors didn't know the link. Uh, between Agatha Christie and uh, and archaeology, so we special a uh, link with Mesopotamia and Chagar Bazaar. And as you remember, there is uh, there is a book, the Five Little Pigs, where 
the one of the persons in the novel, she is archaeology in Chagar Bazaar. So by this book and the other ones, and so we, tr we introduce our items in, and the, our relations between the Pharmacy Museum archaeology, archaeological <laughs> items and Agatha Christie. Let's next, please, Brian. One of the nicest items from Mesopotamia is the way to make penguins. And here you, you we show Agatha Christie and her second husband looking from some photographs of Mesopotamia items. But also by this way, we could speak a little about speak a little bit about uh, about unguents and medicines from Mesopotamia, and this is a very very nice. I must remember you. This is all the items that I'm going to show are belonging to the pharmacy museum, and by this way, we with this item we show that. The unguents became one of the probably most famous kind of medicine, even uh, since the since in the beginning of the times uh, related with pharmacy. Uh, next, please. One of the best items we have in our collection is this sarcophagus. You may wonder why a pharmacy museum has a sarcophagus in the collections. You can see the relation with Agatha Christie, with the novel Egyptian Tomb, Death in Nile, or, or the that uh, comes in the end. But it's in one of the our best items, and it's the, the reason is very simple. Because you know that our colleagues in those days need to provide health in life uh, when people were alive, but also they were needed to protect the body because no one wants to be with any disease in all it days. So any Egyptian didn't like to be ill in the, at the paradise. So by this way, we link the rule of the, I must say, the pre-pharmacists in Egyptian times and how they link to mummification, but also to cosmetic. And by this way, we could also connect why we have cosmetics in our pharmacies and cosmetics, not to make someone pretty, but so also to prevent some disease. So in those days, special eye and skin disease. I must tell you, there is nobody inside. We only, we only have this sarcophagus uh, empty, probably is waiting for, it's a T0, waiting from the, uh, for us to put some health minister or any minister of culture inside of that. But it's one of the, our toppest uh, item we have in our collection. Lots of our visitors, special archaeologists and uh, students that study ancient Egypt come to the museum just to see and to study a little bit uh, our our uh, our item. Let's go, uh, Brian, next, please. All right, so in here, you can see also two special items in our collections. The top one is a medical prescription. And this one is a very good one because it speaks uh, about beer as a medicine. And by this way, we can also say if you are in a bar drinking some beer, you always can say you are in a healing process. So, and, but these medical prescriptions is important to us and to explain 
how we still use medical prescription in our days and try to explain that even now like those in those days medical prescriptions is the best way to provide some uh, not to provide uh, sorry to provide errors because in this relationship between doctor, pharmacist and patient, we need to have some secure item, something to, to prevent errors. And medical prescription has been this sample of security to explain how to do a, a medicine, but special to, to give right information to avoid errors. One of our items also is this written in silver and gold. And if you remember the mother in Mesopotamia, it's one of probably it's a, a sample like this one is linked in this, uh, in this novel. But also we use this to explain this, some drinks and how drink became also important in a way to introduce medicines in our body. And especially if we link the, all the icon to the, to the vessel and to make the vessel a, a magical bow to bring, is a, uh, to bring also a magical medicine to our body. Next, please. It's, and special magic words, magical bows is like this one. We have also very important with all these words and to explain that also in this appointment with that, it's more linked to Christian uh, uh, archaeology. And this is an item linked to uh, angels asking angels to help us and special the powerful the powerful of the words the letter and how we could use in even in those days the powerful of the words to heal saying or to bring those words to a liquid and use again the liquid to bring that healing process to our uh, body. Next, please. If you remember, we in Hercule Poirot, uh, and, uh, and uh, I'm sorry if, if I'm going to say some mistake, but ancient Greece is not very uh, often uh, uh, tickled. Uh, but we use the special the uh, triangle of roads because. In that book, there the lady is going to a, a, a visit to to some archaeological sites, but also use the the uh, the, the I can't read, uh, sorry the the labors of Hercules, which by this way we use the a way to sorry to use the way to speak a little bit about our ancient Greece collections. Also, not uh, only the vessels, but the, the humor uh, ideas, or, but also the doses and the link between the gods, demons, and pharmacy and medicine. And by this way, our visitors also could see some ceramics and glass jars. Like I told you, we have a very nice collection of ancient Greece glass jars. And to speak about uh, exactly also some techniques of the uh, glassware. All right, next please, Bryony. Like I told you, sometimes we also went to not only to Hercule Barreau, but uh, but with other books. And here, you especially they came from Baghdad, uh, and we used that uh, on this book, but also 
the appointment with death and uh, also to make our link to our Arab and Islamic items. And here you can see our Islamic pharmacy we have in the museum. And here we explain the Islamic, the Arab and Islamic arts of doing medicines. And also to explain the, especially the alchemy, the real alchemy, not the magical one, but the chemistry and how the Arab and Islamic culture use chemistry in pharmacy. And as you know, also using the idea of the pharmacies in the streets. But, uh, and it was quite surprising also, people didn't know that the, probably the first pharmacies uh, in the streets is an uh, idea used during the 8th century from the Islamic uh, culture. Next, please, Bryony. Oh, I, I like special this one, chocolate box. And, and it was quite interesting because uh, we link chocolate with our pre-Columbian arts, uh, pre-Columbian vessels, and especially with this one and similar that were used to, to protect and cacao. And by this way, we could explain how chocolate became part of pharmacy and health, special to fight against melancholy. And, uh, and it was uh, this way that also we could explain that even in our days, having dark chocolate can be also a very nice way to fight, to, to fight against melancholy, depressions, but also to understand that chocolates and with sugar became so popular in the 17th, 18th century that was uh, sold in our pharmacies as a medicine. Next, Bryony, thank you very much. All right, so with this item, you can see this beautiful a pharmacy chest from the Imperial Ro Royal House, of, the Imperial House of Russia. It's a 19th century, and by this way, you can see our link. We link with probably the great love of Ekil Paro and the Russian Duchess. I know she 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 wasn't a very nice girl to Ecuparo. Ecuparo has the, the broken heart, but here we link these two books with this magnificent magnificent chest uh, um, pharmacy's chest, and also we do link the need to have pharmacy chest when you travel, but also when you need to go to a pharmacy and ask to the pharmacist, to the apothecary, please help me, I'm going on traveling. So it will take about two weeks, three weeks, and I need your help, I need your knowledge to help me to survive this trip. This is very important to explain that uh, pharmacy is always when you need it. Next, Bryony. No, not this one. Oh, sorry, next, probably. Uh, all right, my dear friends, now I'm going to show some uh, photos from our few places in our museum. I hope you come to our to see the museum. This is uh, our museum in Oporto. The two museums are organized by timeline. So in here you can see some of uh, uh, of our collections. 
Egypt, but also posters from 19th century and so on. So it's uh, two, uh, this is only photographs from our museum in Oporto. Let's, let's go uh, uh, running. And here also the some items from the uh, Lisbon Farm, uh, Museum of Pharmacy. In, in Lisbon, we have more pharmacies, but also uh, is where we have the sarcophagus. But the two museums, the two places, they are not rivals. They, are, they complete each other. If you want to know very well our collection, you should see, first of all, our website, but perfectly, you, come, you should come and see the two museums in Lisbon and Oporto. And by this way, you can see a live and you can feel the history of pharmacy and the rule of the pharmacies all over the world because the museum has one mission. We need and we want to show that pharmacy unite the world. And in different times, in different places, you always have a pharmacy that help you to survive to the, all the problems we have. Because if you go to a pharmacy, if you need a pharmacy, you still have solution. You only go to a pharmacy when you have solution. So we are always in, in this our timeline, we show that we are part of the solution of a health system, but we have the knowledge not to sell only, but to make new molecules, to make new medicines to save lives. Next, Barney. And my dear friends, thank you very much for your attention. And I hope really, I hope to see you, all of you in Lisbon and also in Oporto uh, in our two museums. I must explain why I think this is not a pharmacy museum for the Portuguese pharmacists. It's a pharmacy museum for every culture, for everyone, and you are most welcome in the, these two parts of the museum. I'm not sure whether Chris can still hear us. So instead, I will say thank you ever so much, Jao. What an amazing tour through your global connections and uh, all of those inspirations um, given by uh, Christy and Hercule Poirot. Um, so thank you ever so much. There's been comments in the chat saying what wonderful collections and how much they enjoyed seeing them. Um, there's a question to you. Um, from Maria, who asks about that gorgeous Russian medicine chest and wanted to know which museum it's in. Is it in Lisbon or is it in Oporto? Oporto. Okay. Oporto. I, I was, uh, uh, I thought that Maria was asking me, was asking if I vote for the president of the Republic of Portugal. And I should say, no, I, I believe in monarchy. <laughs> That's okay. the reason why I'm doing this lecture for for countries linked with monarchy. Yeah, <laughs> great. I, I, I start to agree with you because uh, our republic is so so bad <laughs> that I think we maybe we we could uh, make a, a change. <laughs> Me meanwhile, Jao, you've been very successful because lots of people are saying they must come and visit. So um, that as one of your uh, aims of this evening, I think you've been very successful. Oh, can, can, I, you. can I ask you a question as one museum curator to another? Um, oh, right. ha have, you, have you found that the um, exhibition on Agatha Christie has brought in different visitors? than the ones you yes. might normally get? 
Uh, Brian, I must explain. It wasn't an exhibition. It was no, the interpretation. A, 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 a interpretation and, and a, a different travel in the museum. Oh yes, uh, Brian. Uh, special um, uh, family families. So all the brought the younger ones, and it was quite interesting because. It was two ways. Uh, one way for the younger ones to to see and to read the Agatha Christie books, because uh, w one of the things I, I I understood was many of the Portuguese visitors have uh, uh, more link with the ITV series and the movies, not so much the books, mm -hmm. and it was a way. Uh, for them to to read them to, for the first time or the other ones uh, to read again and try to see where where were those items or where I could find the link with those items. Mm -hmm. So it was um, it was it still is Brian it still is people are still coming to to for this visit uh, visit to to Brilliant. Agatha Christie. Great. We've got two more questions. Um, one is asking about that beautiful bowl with the writing when you were talking about using magical words as well as uh, 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 um, pharmaceutical substances. And the question is, what, where did that? Where does the bowl come from? What's the writing on on that bowl? Oh, it's uh, 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 it's from. Let me. It's an Aramaic. My, Aramaic, can Aramaic, I say Aramaic? Yeah. Yes. Aramaic, all right. It's uh, Aramaic. It's from and it is from Mesopotamia area, and mm -hmm. it's a very nice, uh, a very nice bowl. It's a magic, as you know, magic from diamond bowl, and uh, it's uh, it was one of the uh, of those items I tried to read and ask the help of angels to help us to create the vaccine. <laughs> and, and it was it, it was great. I, I must say, Brian, one thing, uh, and to all of us, probably the pharmacy museum has the most interesting collection about COVID. Um, uh, we have the the some blood sample from the first uh, first patients with COVID from the. And even the vaccines used in Portugal, everything that was related with uh, COVID, we brought to our museum. It's probably one of the best collections uh, with Portuguese items against COVID. Fantastic. So not just ancient objects, but absolutely up to date. Oh. Uh, uh, all, always, right? Because mm. it's uh, and you understand uh, probably better. As, and I would like to apologize to all the all our friends that are listening to us. But you you understand uh, better this is when we study pharmacy, we are not not just studying the past. We are still live pharmacy and. Probably what happened one minute ago, it's important to the pharmacy history. Absolutely. So it's we we still need to to be attention to every experts of pharmacy because it's it's an ongoing project and it's an ongoing history. Always, always. Okay, another question. Stuart Anderson asks: Does the museum hold other items that illustrate? the contribution of Portugal's colonies to metropolitan pharmacy. So in terms of your collection of global items and their impact back on uh, on Portugal's pharmacy. Oh, Stuart, I must tell one thing. We have everything like a good pharmacy. <laughs> everything. You should come. Now we have well, we we have Stuart. We have some items from the the Portuguese outremer. Uh, we we didn't call colonies in our culture. It's always outremer provinces. 
So, and we have not so much, but we have some samples of uh, links. Look, it's special. In our, uh, our main interest in the museum is not Portuguese items uh, in, the, in the pharmacies in those countries like Mozambique and Angola, but more the traditional way to do and understand the nature and how to use that knowledge and nature in a traditional way. And we, we, we do have, not many, but we, we do have some items that link to different cultures. Thanks, Jao. One more question from Chris Derrett, um, who says, thank you for showing us your wonderful collection. Did any of the Greek vessels contain Materia Medica when they were excavated? Uh, no, Chris, I use all... I use... It's one of the good things to be director of the pharmacy museum is, is we can try everything, even from the ancient world. No, unfortunately, we don't, we don't have nothing inside. Uh, uh, we have some items, uh, we have some from the Unguent vessels from Egypt, not from the, uh, not from the ancient, ancient Greece. Thank you. I think that's all the questions. So, well, to say thank you again ever so much from all of us, fascinating to see the museum, fascinating to see the objects and two main themes in the chat. One is that people are inspired to read more Agatha Christie and to watch more Agatha Christie movies. But secondly, I think we're all coming to uh, Lisbon and Porto as soon as we can to uh, to visit oh. your uh, your wonderful museums in person. So thank you. Uh, oh, Brian, it's not it's not my you know it's not my museum, my collection. Oh, because no. if, if it was mine, it was all about crusades because that is my main area is health during the crusades time. That's the reason why I saw like the Holy Grail of uh, Monty Python's and Life of Brian. That's <laughs> perfect. Well, we'll come to see Portugal's pharmacy museum. That's great. That's <laughs> wonderful. Please do so. You are most welcome, and and uh, you will see many, many other items, even linked to 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 England history. Like I must tell you, Brian, you, 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 you know that, and Chris know, we have, we have Shackleton medicine chest, but my favorite is Sir Walter Riley. That's great pirates, or sorry, buccaneer, but also pharmacists, but, and also historians. So it's like, like you and me, Brian, Pirates and pharmacists and also a, a historian. Perfect. That's a great place to end. Zhao, thank you ever so much. Thank you to everyone for coming. And just to tell you that our next Zoom talk that we are hosting, um, let me just check the date, is um, from Lucy Jane Santos. Um, and she's speaking to us on the age of radium. Um, drawing from her recent book and her amazing collection and it's Monday the 15th of November at 6 30 so um, look out for the links and we hope to see you there but thank you again Jao thank you everybody thank you very much and, and good thank evening you. have a good evening yeah thank you very much thank you